everyone it's the 15th of june as you can see i've been a little bit busy so sort of, i've built the raised bed so i've got some footage of sort of clearing this end and building the bed so i might just upload that just as a time lapse uh, i might just sort of overdub with some audio um just to kind of explain what i'm doing so it's kind of done over two afternoons so how i'm going to upload that i don't know yet i might incorporate with when i do the compost heaps and all that lot i will video some of it but obviously i need to get it done so and if the weather's bad i can't really get the camera out because it'll be raining so i'll just catch bits of the whole corner as i do it but i'll say the bed's done i've covered it up because uh something keeps coming down and scratching at it so it just ends up hooking the cardboard up so i'll put another little layer of compost on it and i've covered it over so hopefully i'll be planting in that you know in a month or something like that so i've sown some more brassicas just pretty much the same sort of stuff as some um, broccoli, some cauliflower, some cabbage and everything like that, just for later in the season, sort of, you know, for the kind of October, November sort of time. And obviously I start to shut the beds down then, because uh, getting ready for the floods. So we'll have a look around all the allotment, because last time you saw this was end of May, 28th of May or something like that. So it's kind of like, what, uh, just almost three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. So everything's sort of like, won't grow a bit because we had quite a bit of rain and now I've had some warm weather so it's ideal growing conditions but it's also ideal for blight and I've not sprayed this year it's the first time in years I've not sprayed so I might just play it by ear and uh and not bother this year um because it's only a couple of weeks and I can start harvesting some of the potatoes um small ones just the Duke of Yorks because then I can get down and start harvesting my peas because once we get a bit of rain they'll start to swell because it's full of flowers and pots Broccoli, I'm going to harvest some broccoli today, spring onions and probably some beetroot. Um, so I'll look around the plot. Um, some of the nets are up. Um, obviously, the brassicas are still covered. I'll look in the fruit cage because I've just planted some Brussels sprouts and a courgette plant, a leftover courgette plant. Um, so that's just like an overspill. So instead of throwing the plants away, I'll put them in here. Um, and then we'll, we'll move to the back garden. You can have a look at the back garden. Um, so I was picking some lettuce yesterday. So um, we'll have a look at how everything is there. A few problems back there, especially cucumbers. Cucumbers, had a bit of an accident with watering can. I went in watering and uh, the rolls flew off and they got a right good flooding. And then one of the pepper tubs at the top, the pot slid off that and then it's just, it just got too wet. So they're suffering from a bit of stem rot, to be honest. So um, if I can get one or two to survive, then that's, that'll be enough cucumbers. So we'll have a look at that when we get back to the back garden. But for now, we'll have a look around the allotment and you can see how things are going here because it's, uh, it's, it's doing okay at the moment. So uh, I'll get the camera and we shall uh, have a look around. I'll just quickly show you what's gone on down this bottom end. Um, so basically I took the, the sunflower bed that's gone. I had two raised beds that were here, small ones, they've gone. So I've emptied my compost heaps, obviously into the bed. And I've got a little bit of the, um, the compost that I had, the sort of council green compost. Some of that's in the, one of the black dialects for now, just to get it out of the way. Because I need to obviously strip all that fence out. All this compost and area needs to come out. So I'm gonna have no fence up probably overnight because we'll try and do it in two days. Um, the pallets are all here. They're all kind of split to a single layer. Um, I did that a few weeks ago for I did my wrist and my back in. So I did kind of have an idea how to put it all together, but I've kind of forgotten now. So I'll just have to um, sort of pull that together sort of without a plan. I know which is the back and which is the sides and it's kind of adjustable to a degree but I'll just sort of wing it and um, three bays and that'll be for me and the water butts will be behind it. I'm going to the fruit cage, have a look because uh, there's absolutely stacks of blueberries on here. So I mean these ones are full of berries, so fruit, fruit cage is shut now. Um, Obviously, that some of these branches will near enough touch the floor, but uh, we do need some rain soon, I think, to uh, help everything swell up. Um, there's, a, there's only four Brussels sprouts. I've kept one back at home and potted it on because one of the ones that I plant in the back garden is it's a bit slow, so I don't know if there's something wrong with it. So I might pull that one out and replace it. But that's the fruit cage. Great vines are growing. I'll probably uh, get rid of them this year and do the fruit cage either or train them in properly. Cause I've had them for years, I just keep hacking them off and they keep coming back. So, I'll, if I can train them somehow when I, when I do the fruit cage, you know, I'll, I'll just see what happens. Cause obviously, the fruit cage is going to change a little bit in size, lay out a little bit, might be, move some bushes about. So, this is sort of autumn time when everything's dormant in here before the floods come. So, get, so you're probably looking at, I don't know, October time, I'll deal with the fruit cage. Just go back out of the fruit cage. 
make sure I lock it up. I don't want a sneaky bird going in there and uh, locking it in because that's happened to me before. As you can see, the spuds um, have gone absolutely mad. So there's no chance of getting in there to hill anymore, but uh, they're hilled up a bit anyway. But they've not been sprayed because I usually use the um, JBA Black Guard. You know, because you used to use something called Bordeaux mix, which is kind of copper sort of spray because it all looked like a nice blue colour when you sprayed it. But um, I might just, for the first year in what, 10, 12 years, I might just not spray them because uh, I always get blight, but it just tends to, you know, be a little bit later. The main ones are the main croppers over there, the Orla. But um, like I said, I should get something. I just don't want it to dry out too much and then hammer it down because you end up with splitting on your potatoes. Um, peas, they're probably about four and a half, nearly five foot high, some of them now. So there's pods on them, it's probably a couple of weeks, a bit of rain, they should start swelling. If not, I'll just put some water along it if need be. Um, no, it might look all water and then it'll chuck you down. So uh, I might just see how they get on. Onions, um, they're doing all right. I've left the net up now, there's nothing rotted off, but they're a little bit on the small side still, so they've got a lot of growing to do because you're getting near the uh, longest day soon and then they start to swell. So they could do with putting on a bit more growth of this next week and then start fattening up, you know, bulbing up. But uh, there'll, there'll be a crop of onions unless if something disastrous happens. Sweet corn, that's all in, doing all right. Beetroot, I say some of them I'll take because they're small and there's only me who eats it. Um, obviously i keep trying to keep this foliage out of the way to allow that sweet corn down there up which is still doing all right it's not been stunted i mean they're a bit small behind because they're getting a bit shaded but be all right. garlic seems to be okay i've not had a poke about yet but i should imagine like another month i've not seen any signs of rusters yet a bit of yellow in here and there but you know they're tickling away okay <coughs> cauliflower um they're doing the twist thing in the middle now so uh, cauliflower should be arriving in about a month, probably a couple of weeks, and I might start seeing the odd little bit of a head. Um, we'll come round here, cabbage, the prime or two. Um, I'm going to take two of them today because if we get a heavy downpour of rain, they'll just split and erupt in the middle. So I'll take the uh, probably the biggest ones, to be honest, them two. Then I'll just give the rigoletto a little bit more space, you know, because they don't they don't seem to be doing as as good, but um, you know they are quite crowded, but they they stand really well to be honest um, so I, I came down the other day and did a little bit of weeding took out some of the yellow under foliage because it's just where slugs hide so i can eradicate that then i'm not going to have loads of slug holes everywhere but the red onions seem to have come good because uh, all the problems i had with voles and moles turning and uplifting them they seem to have anchored in and the very sturdy tops on them where the, the white ones are a bit you know flimsy but that's red spark um, that variety they're doing all right spring onions probably take it because they're not like really dense bunches then it's probably like you know anywhere between four and six per bunch so i'll probably take a few bunches of them because they're one of the first things that tend to show signs of rust because there is some chives that are kind of wild they're an old plot and i think they keep the spores every year you know and because they just come up and their spores come off them to everyone else you know but uh, it's just one of them things so broccoli so i need to take this net off I won't film harvesting loads of it, I'll just probably, you know, film a little bit of it, but plenty of heads, some smaller heads that'll probably be, you know, a week. And then, you know, there's obviously some that are on borderline of blowing. I mean, that's probably, you know, six, seven inches, that one. That one there's probably getting up for about eight inch. You know, it's on the boat verge of blowing, so I don't leave it any longer. When I came down the other day, I thought I need to get up and harvest and bring the camera up and harvest them because, uh, if I, leave, if I leave that till next week, it'll be gone. So I might as well take the head and then the side shoots will come and I can, the other heads I can just pick as I need them, but I think there's just 30 in there. So there's quite a few broccoli heads to go at. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's 30 in there. I can't remember. I did, I did like a, a row of three, then four, then three, then four like that. So um, just to give them a little bit more space, but it's not really hindered the growth. You know, everything's got a head on it. There's no like little stunted ones that are struggling and left behind. So uh, I'll get the net up and I'll get some of them ripped out and we'll just uh, have a look at some of them after. Right, so I've got my knife and my secateurs ready. 
Can't find my usual knife. I think I've left it at home in the uh, in the shed. So luckily I've got one here. Don't know how sharp it is, but it should be all right. So these are handy if you can ask a you know a supermarket or something. If you can have a few, they are very handy for this sort of stuff. But um, we'll just see how we get on. And I'll try not to cut my fingers like I did once before with second tier. So I'm gonna try and go with knife. This is case for finding the underside of the head. They take a bit of stalk with it as well. So this variety is a quills. You know, it's a decent size head. You know, good what seven inches across there. That it's a decent head. It's not blown, so I'm happy with that. I'll just uh, take some of this foliage off. All right, so I've no compost heap to put it in, but I've got one of the Daleks I can put it in. It's just a case of checking through anything that looks like it's well, there's one here it's close to blowing so that one can come out the problem is is being able to see without chopping your fingers you know and you can you don't have to take your whole plant out you know because side shoots will follow you know, which I'll continue to pick. You know, so a lot of this will just get sort of uh, blanched and frozen. I've still got some left over from last year because I had a, God knows how many I grew last year, but there were a lot. You know, but same again, they're a, both good size heads in. Just in case of going through. Uh, that one, I don't leave it because I'm not going to get down for a few days. So it's better to take it than... Uh, you know, it's probably five inch that. You know, I could give the greens to Kane, but there's certain things like, you know, broccoli and Brussels sprout greens that he's not allowed to really have because um, it contains something in it like uh, something to do like oxalic acid, um, which kind of strips calcium from them. So you just have to be a bit careful. Somebody's asked for an update on Kane, so I'll probably do uh, a video soon, just showing basically his outdoor pen, his indoor sort of enclosure. Um, just an update, you know, because there's obviously there's some people who follow the channel, who, you know, who like the, uh, the old reptile thing. But yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to leave them just for a few days, though. Not many. It's, uh, it's a good little... Good little hole. And these were sown way back in the oh, end of February. I think we came up here sort of around mid April. You know, we're only mid June. You know, so that's what I mean. You want to be sowing some already or now for your winter stuff. Otherwise, your bed will end up sat there empty for, for quite a while, and you think, well, you still got growing season left, so use it up. You don't have to put more brassicas in, you do something else. Um, so like the salads and stuff like that, I'll probably do some more soon, but not as many, because I am getting sick of salads now. But you know, just from that first sowing. Um, I have sown some more, pricked out some other Grenoble red. Um, but it'll get to a point where I'll just cut the plants off at home and then uh, pop some new fresh ones in. It just gives me a little bit of time to switch from the salads to the, you know, the actual veg stuff while the tomatoes are coming on. And then it sort of switch back to salads. And get the freezers loaded up. Well, I'll pop the net back over, but yeah, I'm happy with that. It's a decent size, a decent hole. So I've just got to keep them somewhere shaded, otherwise they'll go a bit floppy. Broccoli's done and cabbage is there. Uh, just got two of the cabbage. So there's three left in there. I've uh, got nothing else to fill the gap as yet, but I will have at some point. There'll be some I've found that I can uh, fill the gap. Might be Swede or something like that. We still sold Swede now, um, if I've got any seeds. Right, so hopefully these will pull up fairly, fairly straightforward. But I've got a little uh, fork I've just sort of found stuffed in my fence just to try and loosen it up a bit. Because this bed is pretty firm. 
case to loosen the roots up a bit. Just try and get most of the uh, soil off. You know, just kind of just try and separate them. It's easier to do it here than make a lot of mess in the kitchen at home. You know, there's a bunch of five there, different size ones, so try and take a couple more bunches. You know, because I'm not, uh, I might grow a fair bit, you know, later in the season, but some of the beds I might just sort of cover over. Um, just so I can have a little bit of a rest, I guess, you know, because the freezers are full, the fridges are full. Um, I can get with other things, maybe do a bit of fishing. Which would be nice. Well, roots hit these. So it's, it is a no dig bed this but uh, it's like a lot of the soil from underneath you know we've had moles and stuff in there it all mixes it up it's still like good because all the nutrients from the, what you put it over the years will um, be mixed in with the, the soil as well for whatever the same depth as the bed is below I think that'll do for, for today's spring onions you know good bunch there I've still got a tub of spuds to empty at home I'll make some any tiny ones, I'll make some potato salad. Uh, enjoy them. These are uh, feast, these ones. I've never grown these ones before. But uh, they're not bulby or anything, because some of the white lisbons to grow a bulb at the bottom, which is alright, you know, but uh, I'd rather I'd like them smaller than that. I kind of want them like just over pencil size, really. But uh, it's different, you know, if you don't get up here for like a week, you know, this, this, this time yeah, everything just comes ready. Oh, let's get some beetroot, I think that'll do for here then. So that's the uh, first sort of like good harvest of the year, you know, I'm quite more than happy with all that. Uh, you know, I think there's 11 broccoli heads, a couple of the uh, golden acre, the prime or two cabbage, oh, five beetroot and a good bunch of spring onions. So uh, I'm going to get all this back over to the van, get home, we'll have a look around the garden. Like I said, I need to get it concentrated on this corner here to build the compost heaps because the series of potatoes and things start coming ready, I need somewhere to actually put all the all the waste. Um, so there's no point in me filling there and having to move it all out. So hopefully next week, get that done. And as things come ready, I can start loading the bay up then. All right, so I shall see you back in the garden. All right, back home in the garden. So I'll just give a quick tour of what's going on here. Um, yeah, just nothing much here, just things have grown. Um, sweet peas start to flower now, so I've cut some off and put them in the house. Uh, they're not quite as vigorous this year, um, so I need to like dig that soil out from there and put some manure in it at the end of the year, I think, just to because it's, it's very fine when you water it, it's just not holding onto water that well. I mean, it's had sweet peas growing it for years now, and I just add a little bit of compost to it now and then, but obviously, it needs some more, something more bulky. Um, so I'll put some. Uh, Cobra, French climbing beans in. Slugs have had a bit of a field day and they're not looking too great, but they'll perk up. And uh, once they get wrapped around a couple of times, they'll be off. Strawberries, pulled all the strawberries off because they were kind of depleting the plants a bit. So I thought I'll pull all the fruits off and let the plant concentrate on actually getting bigger. Um, so some radish there. Here's some spuds there with the swift Caledonia rose, um, some sarpo mirrors. Um, that one there just it's only just coming above the ground but I say them are mainly to just grow some sea potato for for next year all them really are just mainly to grow some sea potatoes for them they're nice and clean um, and then the pentland crowns at the end there so, but uh, they'll struggle for a bit of light here anyway because obviously they've got a great big clematis that's just gone a bit mad um, I've looked in the polytunnel so I'll just uh, the little fella out here, he's having a bit of a day in the sun. I'll um, just put some lettuce down for him. That's one of them uh, valens, cut it down, it's like a little cost lettuce. So, 
you're probably coming out of that. He's not fussed, he'll just get stuck in probably. Yep. They're quite happy eat a few of them. I think we've got two or three left in the fridge and that's all them, but they're a good lettuce, so I'm gonna grow some more of them later in the season. So we're gonna have a look in the polytunnel. So it's a bit uh, wild in here, the tomato plants have come on quite well, they're getting quite tall now. Roots on them, and some of these are not probably not far off, three and a half foot. That uh, a few problems with the Roma down the bottom end there, I keep losing the growing tip, so I have to keep letting the sucker grow. Um, but they're just curling a bit, I think. You know, and these here because they don't get much airflow behind the door, they go a bit limp and because it's directed the sun. They're the tigerella, but uh, you know, as a, you can see, there's a couple of tomatoes on that. I need to start cutting some of the lower foliage off these now because they're very dense. Um, tray under there, that's got my uh, brassicas in, my late sowings. So I might have to put them somewhere a bit more shaded actually because they uh, might get a bit hot. Some more lettuce up there. A couple more cucumbers in pots because we'll have a look at my disastrous cucumbers in a minute. Um, down the side, down there. I've got a sunflower, one's just sort of like completely rotted off on the stem there. That's happened in the last 24 hours, so don't know what happened there. But never mind, so I'll just pull that one out. I've got some other ones that are probably, you know, not so great, but we'll just see how they go. Because I, I, when I sold them, I was going to put them at the allotment, but obviously I've stripped the sunbed out now. It's some, you know, the actual bed for them. So I'll just sort of pop them, pop them down the side at Polyton. Some leftover sweet corn, that's a swift, so I'm just going to compost that. Um, that was where I had all the mustard and everything in, it's all gone now. Courgettes, it's some obviously, courgettes are starting now. Always small, but I don't mind them small. Um, something going on with these, these yellow, these are yellow courgettes. I'm not sure it's some sort of like mosaic virus, that I don't know. But it's just that, so I'll have to watch where I put them. Um, I'll see how the new middles grow on them. And then as soon as them leaves start to die off a bit, I'll get rid of them. But uh, yeah, I'm not really keen on the look of that. Uh, so composting bay, I've got some lettuce there. I keep moving around to put in the shade. That's like 40 Grenoble red, that. So I'm not going to be using all them. Because there's some new bear plot holes up at the allotment, I thought um, I'll do some for them. Some leftover celery. These are the other sunflowers. Just been sort of left here drying out. So I need to start composting a lot of stuff and clearing up now getting ready for the later bit of the year um petunias in pots it's weird, it's weird how them bottom ones are more vigorous than the top but you know i'll even be they look nice when they get all bushy i've only put two plants per pot this year because they get quite big and dense that's the b and q uh comparison so everything's doing all right mine's sort of caught up at the end of my own compost so i've Kind of trying to water them every couple of days now because they are drying out pretty rapid, especially when it's like this weather wise. The Caledonian rose over there, I put the actual uh, timber supports up now with some strings across. Watered them yesterday, um, so I'll start using some high potash feed. Got this bed here, this is full of, I don't know where you can see, but it's pretty rammed. This is um, the Frankie Seeds Romaine Lettuce. There's the iceberg in the middle that I think David Hunter gave me, so I can start harvesting them because they've hearted up. And then there's some Brussels sprouts, I don't know how you can make them out. I think there's 14 in there, I think. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, there's 14 in there. So obviously when I start harvesting them, the sprouts can get through and I'll just change his net for something taller. This bed's still tickling along. Um, Grenoble Red, so I picked this yesterday. Um, so I can tell the difference just from yesterday to today. Uh, the mazure and the red salad bowl, and you can see in between some parsnips. Whether, you know, see how they go. I've got like a thin cane and pushed it down, and it's, it's nice and clear, so everything should grow nice and straight. Um, have a look at this back bed. So that was where the um, Valen lettuce was. It's all replaced with celery now. I've not even started the Durham early spring greens over there, but uh, they won't go to waste. You know, because I'll eat them and Cain will eat them as well. He's just a bit picky this time of year. He prefers the grass and lettuce and that. I'll look at, I'll look at the disasters now. So, 
say cucumbers just not doing well at all that one's not too bad but just slowly perishing um it, it's just too wet so just have to if i can get one or two to to carry on then fine cucumber ones need to find somewhere for them i put them in here they'll go a bit mad so i'll probably grow them outside and just like ramble up something the uh, pathetic chilies and everything they're starting to grow now finally um i'll get some off them you know because i'll carry on sort of producing right through to october november these are tarquino uh, they need to be potted on into the final pots they're two litre pots and usually you'd say you'd go up another level maybe to a five litre and then further i'm just going to waz them straight into something like a, you know a, a seven or ten litre pot because i like another bell pepper because the ones in the polytunnel i put them in the final pots yesterday they're 12 litre pots they're giant bell peppers nothing giant about them really just they just get more peppers but i took the first lot of fruits off to try and get the plants bigger but yeah chilies and peppers have not been very well for me this year i don't know if it's compost i started them in but they're all currently growing in the um, new horizon these are the long carrots the red intermediate um they're doing all right apart from one it kind of germinated to that never grew anymore that's keeled over so i'm not going to bother sowing another one i have seen carrot root fly knocking around though um around the stems you know a couple of weeks ago so they'll probably have root fly on them try to see if i can see if there's any knocking around now but can't really see any at the moment but uh what will be will be i'm starting to get some of this onion rot going on again it's only just started this last couple of days so but they're just starting to bulk up that's what happened the other year they just start getting ready and then they sort of die off so those are muscle breliques they're all in i think i've got like 30 or something um they're doing all right and the um, subarctic planted tomatoes cut more lower foliage off to keep them off the ground um i watered them in when i planted them and they've never watered since so they'll you know they've got roots in now so they'll be okay you can make out down there some dwarf french beans um i think they're safari or they might be ferrari i can't remember i've got both um i've just sown some other ones for down the plot um so it's just a gap filler because i'll probably put some lettuce down the bottom because i've got a few collard greens left down there they're called um champion they are better for cane and they're actually they're all right i don't mind eating them got some rocket that's going to flower down there but i just pull the flowers off and probably make out i've got the other rest of the rocket still down there still grow i cut it all off at ground level that and it's just sprouted back so pointless sowing any more to put in down here just keep picking that and then i've got these um these are tender star they're like a bit of a hybrid between a, a climbing bean and a runner bean and i haven't sown them when i when i cut the plants off from last year they just fired from the old roots so i thought well i'll just train runners over to each cane and let them swamp that and so it's a bonus crop so i've had to do nothing for them they're just growing like that all on their own from last year you know so i had a good crop off them last year and they just you know cut them all off at ground level left the roots in and those fired so i thought well i'll leave them be saves me doing saves me a job um carrots in here all radish are out now i've sown another row of carrots at the front edge but they're doing all right at the back there's a few patches but you know hopefully they'll be kind of root fly free they're the ishikura spring onions there um and then i've got another batch of feast which is there so they're smaller ones so obviously i've got to finish the ones at the allotment eat get onto these ones and then get onto them ones and i'll probably set another lot off next month i think but all in all everything's growing all right my sweet candle over there they're all okay um i need to start giving them a bit of water because i just worry about it you know drying out and then having a good downpour and they split but uh that's everything that's going on in the garden a few disasters but pretty overall overall everything's kind of tickling along a bit you know doing its own thing overall yeah I'm, I'm happy so i need to sort of find somewhere for these and then put my net over this to put some seedlings out as they you know because i'm trying to give them bits of shade under here there's old sowings under there and then um i'll put some seedlings on there 
and then it'll become my drying rack for my onions. Got some more leaks here which probably go down the allotment. These are called giant leak. I've still got some of them muscle grow left. These are some that I sold at the same time called Crusader. It's supposed to be rust resistant. They're not obviously doing very well because they're starving. I did give them a seaweed feed the other day though, but they're, they're drying out so I need to kind of give them a right good soaking. But I've got a feeling if I plant them, they'll be that stressed, they'll just go to a seed, I think. I don't know. If I find a little spot, I'll put them in, just have them as baby leaks. But I might put some at the plot just to test for rust. Because if other things get rust and these don't, then it's a viable option. You can try these things, you know, because I do get rust at the plot. So uh, that's it from the garden. The cane's still happily jumping away. He's finished one half of lettuce, he's onto the other half now. But, uh, He's loving the decent weather. We had a couple of weeks rain and, and that, but he's been out enjoying it. So uh, on that note, a bit of an update of what's going on, both at the allotment and here. Um, so there'll be more harvest coming. Obviously, done a bit of work down the plot, so uh, how I'm going to upload all that, I don't know yet, uh, because there's, there's hours and hours worth of it, you know, and I've not even started the fence and the, com the compost heap yet. So just that bed, there's probably only three hours footage to go through so I'll probably just cut it right down and, turn and time lapse it that way you know rather than trying to put a big three hour video up because only 10 minutes it'll get watched because um, most of most of my videos are tend to be half an hour and a lot of people just tend to view the first five ten minutes so I'm going to probably start looking at doing just short videos I think soon um, doing it that way I think that's the, that's the best way to get uh, you know to capture more interest on, from people I think I've got me be long-term subscribers and followers you know and it's great to have them you know i'm glad you supported me all these years so take care thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one see you now Bye bye